Hey YouTubers, in today's video tutorial I just want to share with you something pretty interesting that I've been um, wanting to do with my laptop for the last few months now, and that is installing a secondary hard drive in my laptop. Now generally you only have one hard drive in your laptop, but with a very special device that I bought on eBay uh, called an OptiBay, or a uh, super drive replacement, it's called a second HD Caddy. It's made by a company called Nimitz, and uh, if you're a New Zealander, it's only $21, no, sorry, $31, inclusive of, of shipping. So it's a really handy device, and uh, in today's video, I'd like to just simply share with you how to install one of these and uh, get your computer up and running with two hard drives, effectively having more storage in your laptop. And as a video editor, um, that's always a good thing because when you're on the go, it's kind of a bit annoying uh, carrying a few external hard drives with you all the time. So let's open it up. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be opening up a 17-inch April 2009 release MacBook Pro and I understand to the best of my knowledge that the Nimitz um, hard drive caddy will install in any unibody MacBook Pro. So to, to open this up, I'm going to be using a uh, small Phillips screw head and taking out all the screws around the peripheral of the laptop. Once that's done, just hook your fingers down by the hinge and pull up gently and the whole back comes off. And there you go, that's the inside of your computer. For the remainder of this video I'm going to be focusing on the super drive on the inside of the laptop. Now it's a really good idea to keep numbers in your head with regards to screws. So for this operation and on this particular laptop which is an April 2009 MacBook Pro there are five Phillips screws to take out, there's one Torx screw to take out and there are two plugs, three plugs. So I'll, I'll talk you through this. First off, you can use the same screwdriver that you use to open up your laptop to open three screws which sit here, here, and here. Uh, before I get onto that actually, I'm going to use a Torx screwdriver, a Torx 6, which is a six-sided um, star screwdriver head, and take out one of the adjoining supports for the back cover. It's a tiny piece, so look after those two. Next I'm going to use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the three screws. It's now time to unplug a couple of things which connect the super drive to the motherboard. This here is your SATA connection, the little orange tab. So we're going to flick that one carefully up, like that. And this here is the connection to uh, your screen. So be very careful about this one, because if you screw this up, your screen is dead. Carefully pull this one straight back. like that. Next there's another two more screws to take out and this is this little unit which connects directly to the super drive. So using the screwdriver horizontally take these two screws out. Cables out of the way, your super drive should lift up fairly easily straight out of the machine. Just like that. Ta-da! Before you go ahead and install your new hard drive caddy, there's a couple of things you need to steal from the super drive to install the caddy itself. First off, there is the SATA cable which connects the super drive to your, your motherboard, so carefully pry that off with your fingers. Like that. And then secondly, there's the support unit which connects it directly to the, um, the frame of the machine. That requires two Phillips screws. And that's it. Your super drive is decommissioned. If you want to, you can sell it on eBay or trade me. You can give it to a friend, or you could re-enclose it in another um, Nimitz case, which they offer on eBay as well, and use it as a, an external USB drive. So, bye-bye super drive. And hello Nimitz Caddy. Now, I think this is pretty well built. Um, I've had a good look over it, and I think it's been manufactured pretty well, and it fits exactly to the same size as the super drive, which is always good. So let's take out our, our hard drive which we're going to be installing into our computer and for the purpose of this installation I'm going to be installing a 750 gigabyte Seagate hard drive which has a, an RPM of 7200. So this is a really fast drive in terms of hard drives and uh, this is great for storing lots of video, lots of photos, uh, lots of music, just anything and everything really. Um, and particularly as a video editor I want speed, so this is a fantastic drive which rivals um, desktop drives, which is really good. Installation is the simplest thing ever, you simply slide it in, make sure the SATA connectors match up and push it down. Now unfortunately one of the downsides to this unit is that it doesn't come with screws, 
on the underside there are two screw holes which um, if you do have screws by all means I would highly recommend you install them but uh, seeing as I don't have screws and you probably don't either I'm going to cheat a bit and I'm going to use black tape. Essentially you just don't want the drive to be rattling around inside your computer so big fat black tape like that is going to do just fine for me. Ta-da! You may also notice that the hard drive doesn't quite fit snugly into the caddy. Um, they have made the best attempts to put little rubber stoppers on the side to stop it from moving from side to side, but even that is a bit lame. So the sticky tape will for sure stop that up and down, left and right. It's, that's secure. So that's good. The next part is to reinstall that little bracket that we took out of the super drive. So I'm going to install that with the two Phillips screws that we took out. Ah. Alright, so I had major difficulty trying to put this bracket back into the caddy again and I realised that's because the two screw holes that they've provided here are way too small. So I've had to go ahead and cut those threads by really forcing these screws into them first and uh, making its own way. Thankfully the aluminium casing is quite thin so the, um, the threads cut fairly easily. I would have to say out of the whole installation process, installing that bracket again back into the caddy was the hardest part. Next, just put the, the ribbon back in place again. And let's put it back into our laptop. One suggestion I do want to make about the caddy, however, when replacing this bracket, is that the bracket shape, as a, as a guide, should replicate the shape of the ribbon. You don't want to put this in back to front, otherwise it will definitely not fit inside your computer. So there's your hard drive inside the new caddy, you just simply turn it over and slot it in back into the old super drive's position very carefully. Like that. Push the ribbon back into place and carefully put the plug back into the motherboard again. That just clicks in. And likewise very very carefully put your monitor cable back into place and slide it in. that. Alright, let's replace these two screws here. Right, I know this is going to sound retarded, but they've gone as far as making it almost impossible to put the screws back in place where they should belong. So I think I'm going to resort back to my best friend. Les tape. Now with me putting so much sellotape inside my computer, I probably sound like I don't know what I'm doing. I can assure you, I'm very good with computers, but I'm not very good with um, standing by products that are not going to make it easy for the user. So, sellotape, it works. Using the same screwdriver that you use to open up the back case of your machine, install the, the three screws that supported the super drive down to the main body. And I know this is going to sound ultra ridiculous, but I'm returning to the tape again because the position of the screw holes, i.e. here, do not line up. Carefully align your cables back in place, put any pads back where they were if they've fallen out. And there you have successfully installed your new hard drive caddy. So I do apologize for the ridiculous amount of sellotape I've had to use inside my laptop. I promise you that that's not my fault because I do genuinely want to secure this down but screws are definitely not going to help me out. So I want to take the opportunity to describe to you what my current setup is here. I've installed a 120GB OCZ Vertex 3 solid state drive. This is a fantastic drive to use as your startup drive and also install your applications. For me, Final Cut and the um, Final Cut Studio Suite and likewise use it for your library files like for iTunes. Use your iTunes library here and store your music here so um, when your computer accesses your library iTunes starts up in an instant. Likewise with iPhoto, 
depending on your iPhoto setup, I'll put my iPhoto library files here and stick my photos on here because um, on iPhoto, unfortunately, the iPhoto library file does tend to get fragmented and that's terrible when you're opening up the software for trying to get to your photos quickly because it takes a while to piece the library together from all over your drive. So I'm going to stick the library file on there. That being done, I'm going to put the case back on and not put the screws in just yet because I want to make sure that the drive actually works correctly. So gently press down on that and let's boot her up. Having booted successfully back into Mac OS X, you'll have a dialog coming up asking if you'd like to initialize your new hard drive. This is a good opportunity to decide how you would like to partition your disk. So by selecting your disk, you can go partition, select the number of partitions you would like to use. In my case, I just want one, but if you're in intending to install Windows through Boot Camp, two partitions is a good option to use. Make sure you're using the right partition table or partition map and click apply. Partition. And that's it. You've just installed a new hard drive into your computer, doing away with your super drive and making use of the new second hard drive caddy. From there you can go on to shut down and put the screws back in. Now that you're almost done, don't forget to put your torque screwdriver back in and put this little bracket back in its place. Well I hope this has been a relatively easy to follow uh, tutorial and I hope you've enjoyed it. There are some things that I may have missed out with some suggestions in terms, for example, uh, you could make a secondary partition on the new hard drive that you put in for Time Machine even. So you have like a Time Machine backup on the go, which is very handy. Um, you're most welcome to view more of my videos on YouTube. I'm on youtube.com forward slash strokes not drugs and uh, I should be posting more videos in the future with regards to reviewing cameras. So that should be very exciting. Thanks for watching. Until next time, 